What makes you think he wants to marry me? Because he loves you. Passionately, he just told me. But he's never said anything. Ironic, isn't it? A man whose life is devoted to words and he can't put together the three most important ones. That's so touching. I knew you'd see it my way. Stay right here. Finucci's in, Finucci's out, Finucci's in. He give me agita. Lisa. Anthony's trying to tell me that now you're in love with Dr. Poole. Yes, I am. You see? What? Oh, Daddy, yes. He's so sweet, so intelligent, so cultured. Not like some other fellas I know. Well, put Paul out of your mind. You're marrying Anthony. But I love Thornton. Oh, so now it's Thornton? Oh! <laughs> I'll stop that balling, will you? He's the only sensitive man I've ever met. What are you saying? I'm not sensitive? Uh, uh, All right, please, please uh, stop. Please stop. If it's pool you want, it's pool you'll get. But Lisa, you got to cross the finish line on this one. He's your third fiance today, and it's not even like shit. Look, Mr. Provolo, now that she has a husband, can I have back the statement I signed? Forget about it. I'm keeping you on the bench in case this guy doesn't come through. Morning, Doc. Now, now, Mr. Provolone, where are those G's? In here. No, no, you're not enunciating. Good morning, Dr. Poole. Oh, yeah, right. Don't you have something to do? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Goodbye, Mr. Provolone. Goodbye, Dr. Poole. <laughs> Guy's leaving again. And here comes a priest. Enter at your own risk, Father. Aldo, haven't seen you at Mass lately. Oh, really, Father? I can't imagine why. Now, remember, Mr. Provolone, speech is man's most important tool for the conveyance of thought. Yeah, Doc, but when am I going to start sounding like a bank? After me. Round the rough and rugged rocks, the ragged rascal rudely ran. Round the rough and rugged rocks, the ragged ra Round the rough and rugged rocks, the ragged. Round the rough and rascal, the ragged. Oh, look, Doc, I just can't do it. I'm Never learn to speak good. Do not despair, Mr. Provolone. Let's try a new line of attack, shall we? After me. Rocco the rum runner rubbed out Rico the rat with his Roscoe for robbing his rum running receipts. Can you say that? Rocco the rum runner rubbed out Rico the rat with his rascal for robbing his rum running receipts. You did it. Sure, you finally come up with something that makes sense. Excuse me, Mr. Provolone. I'll be going now, if you don't mind. So what's keeping you? <laughs> well, there's the little matter of a week's pay you'll be owing me. She should pay me for introducing her to Bruce Underwood. I'm glad I'll no longer be working in this house. From now on, I'll be having servants of me own. You'll find out what a picnic that is. Shocking insolence. I would have terminated her immediately. I can't do that anymore. The best I could do is fire her. Listen, Doc, I'd like to talk to you about a little difficulty my daughter's having. Really? She seems to have such nicely rounded diphthongs. That's what got her into this jam. 
You see, my daughter's turning 18 and she wants to get married. Well, she's charming. He was a lucky man. You are, Doc. <laughs> well, I'm black. What? You're not married or anything, are you? Well, no, of course not. And how do you feel about kids? Children? Well, I love... Then it's settled! Well, it's settled, but I hardly know the girl. Let me sweeten the pipe. Now, there must be something I can do for you, some dream that you got. Well, now that you mention it, I've always wanted to take Mother to Baden-Baden. There's a doctor there who's doing simply miraculous things with gallbladders. Her gallbladder's on the next boat. Anything else? Um, well, then there's the Thornton Pool School of Linguistics. I can see it from here. Deal, Doc? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Events are moving so fast. Here, this is the clincher. God, what's this? Your mother's gallbladder, the linguistic school, all your dreams. Doc! <laughs> I'm a little confused. I'll be right back. to keep you waiting, Father Clemente. Angelo, you remember Father Clemente. Morning, Father, and thanks again for the swell job you did on Papa's funeral. I know he'd be proud that you kept your promise to him. The father is here to collect for the building fund. Oh, by the way, congratulations on your daughter marrying Bruce Underwood. Uh, I'm afraid there's been a change, Father. She's now marrying a nice Italian boy, Anthony Rossano. It's all for the better. Nothing like a big Italian wedding. Anthony Rosano. Well, forget Anthony. She's not marrying him anymore. What? Well, uh, well, that's a shame. But she's young. Someday she'll find the right one. She's found the right one. Who? Dr. Poole. Dr. Poole? Hello? Get back in the room. Looks like a nice young man. Why is she marrying Dr. Poole? She barely knows him. She barely knew the chauffeur, too. Don't drag out Oscar in front of the father. Who's Oscar? Uh, why isn't she marrying Anthony? Because Anthony is marrying Teresa. Who's, Who's Teresa? Teresa? Look, it's really very simple, but I ain't got time to explain it. I got to call Nora. Who's Nora? Our maid. Ex-maid. No, you fired the maid? No, she quit to marry Bruce Underwood. When did that happen? I don't know. Somewhere between my vest and my pants. What? This is all very confusing. Well, Father, it's one of the mysteries in life. You just gotta accept on faith. Now I gotta run. Uh, uh, Father, why don't you go into the kitchen and have a cup of tea while I clear this matter up? <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Bruce. Nora took the wrong bag. Can you believe that? Yes. Would you mind sending your man around and bring the bag back? Yeah, it's not prevalent. Who the hell you think it is? matter you couldn't make it any outside i came to return this suitcase and collect the old 